Hello guys, this is Cannibal Chess, and in this video we're going to be going over the basics of chess. And what I mean by that is basically we're just going to be talking about what is legal. So if you don't know all the rules, this is kind of going to explain most of the rules of chess, just so you, you're aware of what's possible. But before we get into it, I do want to thank the subscriber who asked me to do a video about this specific topic because... It does help me to know what kinds of things y'all are interested in learning more about because I do want to help y'all get better at chess if I can. And one way that I can do that is if y'all write comments like these that that kind of let me know where y'all are at and in what way can I help y'all get better. What kinds of things do I need to make videos on that will help you get better at chess. But okay, let's start the video off by talking about peace movement. Now beginning with pawns, they can only take pieces that are in front of them and diagonal to them. And there is an exception to this rule that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. And pawns can also, they can also move two spaces the first turn or they can move one space. So you can move the pawn here, your pawn plays something like this, and here you can no longer move twice again. So you can only move once at a time after the first turn. And pawns can also not move backwards, so they can only move forward. Another important thing to know about pawns is that if you get your pawn to the other side of the board, on the entire other side of the board, then you can promote it to any major piece besides a king. So you can promote it to a queen, knight, rook, or bishop. And the exception to taking diagonally that I mentioned earlier is called an en passant. So it's when you or your opponent makes it to the first rank of your side or your opponent's side. So for white, it would be making it to the fifth rank. Black, if they play something like this move, where the pawn is side by side with white's pawn, then you can actually take sideways and then it actually captures the pawn like that. And it can do you can do the same thing as, as black here. So if you play this move, white plays this move, then you can take the pawn like that. And all the major pieces are much less complicated in their movement. So for, for bishops, they can only move diagonally, but they can also only stay on the color that they're on right now. So this is a dark square bishop because it can never go to light squares. And this is a light square bishop because it can never go to dark squares. And for rooks, they can only move up down, left, or right. So those are the only four directions that they can move. They can never move diagonally. And knights can only move in L shapes, so they can go one space this way and then two spaces down, and they can go something like one space down, two spaces this way. So it's always going to be one space one way and then two spaces the next way, and they cannot just move diagonally, but something that they can do is they can move through other pieces. So it's the only piece that can actually not really be blocked in by pawns, so here the knight could move up. So past the pawn and then to the side over here. For queens, they're basically just rooks and bishops mixed together. So queens can move diagonally, but they can also move vertically and horizontally. So they can kind of go any way except for how knights move. And this also makes it easy for them to be able to switch from white diagonals to dark squared diagonals. So they could go to the dark squared diagonal or they could go to a light squared diagonal and either one is accessible to them. And the last piece are kings, and they're kind of boring to play as, but they can move in any direction. So they can move diagonally or horizontally or vertically in any direction. But the thing is that you can't really put them in any danger, so you can't remove the king here because the rook is guarding this entire file. So it has to stay away from that entire file and just move in in any way that it wants to over here. But something cool that the king can do is called castling, and it's with the rook. So king and the rook, they basically kind of switch places. And if you do it queenside, you should notice that there are five squares in this position. So king is on the fifth one from the right. Rook is on the very left one. And so the king is going to come to the middle of the five, and the rook's going to come to the, the right side of the king. So <clears throat> the king goes to middle one, rook goes over. If you do it on the other side, it's called short castling or kingside castling. There are four squares in this one. And so the king is going to come to this one, and then the rook's going to come to the other one, like that. And now I'm going to go over what the subscriber asked in his comment. So he basically said something on the lines of, if, if the clock runs out, who wins? How's the winner decided? And there's actually, there's two different ways that, that this could happen. 
So this is the first scenario where white has has some some more stuff on the board besides the king. So they have like pawns. They could have like a rook or a knight also. But let's just go with this one. So the the white side has three pawns and black has a queen. So black's definitely better here. But if black runs out of time, then it's actually a loss for black and white actually wins the game. Even though, yes, their position's worse, but they actually they have they have a chance, basically. Like they could potentially in a different universe where you're playing against someone who doesn't know how to play very well, get one of their pawns to the opposite side, get a queen, and potentially win the game. So it would be a win for white if black ran out of time. Now, if if white didn't have any pawns and they only had a king and black ran out of time, then it would actually be a draw because white would have insufficient material to checkmate in any situation. So in any situation, the king cannot checkmate the king because it can't get close enough. And black black does have ways of checkmating the king, but they just ran out of time. So it's a draw because both sides have no way of continuing the game in a way that would, that would um, make a checkmate, basically, if that makes sense. And there is also a few other ways of drawing games as well. So this this way is called threefold repetition, and basically it means that if you get the same position three times in a game, then you can also you can also draw the game. So so this is the position right now. That both the kings are on the G file, and so White goes H file, then he follows. So this is the second time that the king is on the G file. First time he was already there, and so this is the second time, and then a third time, and then it's a draw. So again. This is the first time, second time, third time. So that's a threefold repetition draw. And also important to know about draws, there are ways of forcing draws as well. So if you if you can get your opponent's king to, to uh, move somewhere after you check him and then get him to move back to where he was before by another check and then just do that three times, that's also a, a threefold repetition, but it's a forced draw. And then there's another type of draw, it's called a 50 move, uh, 50 move draw. And the, the rule for that one is there has to be 50 moves and there can be no captures and no pawn moves for 50 moves, basically. And those are kind of like, those are really rare, but you kind of see them sometimes when there's like an in-game where it's like kings and then just pawns that are kind of locked up so they can't really move anywhere. And you just move 50 times with the king and then it's just a force draw as well. And also there are two ways to win chess games. So one of the ways is is on time. So basically the only thing you need for that one is make sure that you have enough material on your side. So if you have if you have two bishops, it's still insufficient material even if they lose or if they are out of time because you can't checkmate your opponent with just two bishops or even just two knights. They would have to have like a pawn or you would have to have another pawn, something like that. And then the other way is is a checkmate. So basically, like this this situation here, black could checkmate the white king because you move the bishop out of the way, king is threatened by the queen, so the king has to move. King moves over here, so he's not threatened anymore, and then the queen comes down here. And basically, it's a checkmate because the queen is attacking these two squares, the king can't really escape by any of these squares, and the king can't take the queen because it's guarded by the bishop. So there's no possible way for the king to escape, and it's a checkmate. And important to know if you're playing in person and not online, because online it just does it for you, but in person you have to make sure that you're not doing illegal moves. So in like in this position, it would be illegal for white to move the bishop out of the way right now. In any way, in any way you move this bishop, it's going to be an illegal move because you can't purposefully put, or even accidentally, you can't put your, your king in danger like this, because that's just... It's not how the game works. It's just an illegal move. And so you, you couldn't do that. You just have to leave it there. And so yeah, that's all I have for chess basics. I hope this video was as helpful as y'all hoped it would be. And if y'all have any suggestions for future content or videos, anything like that, topics, just make sure to write in the comments below and tell me. And thanks for watching.